Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, those of you joining us now, uh, thank you for attending this webinar about finding and accessing data via the UK Data Service. Uh, my name is Sean, and today I'm going to be presenting together with my colleague, Iraklis. Uh, Iraklis, would you like to say hello? Yes. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we are very happy to have you here. Uh, together with my colleague, Sean, we will go through the finding and accessing webinar together. Uh, so hopefully after the webinar, uh, you will be able to find and uh, navigate through our website, searching for uh, through the thousands of data sets available. Um, yes, Sean, back to you. Uh, yes, we are, are both members of the data access team within the UK Data Service. Uh, and we support researchers getting access to high quality secondary social science data. Uh, before we begin, we'd also like to thank Emma Green for facilitating today's webinar. Uh, so uh, thank you. What we'll cover in this session, well, today's webinar will be in two sections. Uh, the first will cover who we are and what we do as the UK Data Service. Uh, and uh, our data sources and who can access the data in our catalogue and the different ways we categorise the data we hold in the archive. Uh, this section will also include guidance on how to search and find data, uh, plus we'll have uh, a little mini activity for practice, a little bit of interactivity for you there. Uh, the second section will focus on how to access the data we hold uh, Heraclis will take you through that. Uh, we'll initially look at the data access policy, uh, like the access conditions and restrictions, and the registration process. Uh, Heraclis will help you get a clear understanding of the different data access levels and how to access that data. Um, throughout the session, we'll also be looking at different tools which can help you find, explore, and analyze the data. So at the end of the presentation, we'll also allow some time for questions. Uh, please insert any questions you may have in the Zoom uh, Q&A box, uh, and, uh, and we'll try and pick up some as we go, but uh, we'll have a bit more time at the end. Uh, so uh, we'll be using Mentimeter uh, as part of our interactive, sorry, went ahead of myself. Uh, we'll be using uh, Mentimeter in more than one part of the presentation. Uh, so please do take a second to set that up. Uh, I'll be showing you the uh, the code and the uh, in the QR code in a second. Uh, so you can do this by going to menti.com uh, in any browser or by scanning the QR code you're gonna see in the second. Uh, for your convenience, we suggest to set this up on a smartphone or second device. Uh, once you visit menti.com, please enter the code uh, you'll see on the following slide. Uh, so using this tool, we're now going to ask you a quick set of questions, and that will help us understand your current experience with finding and accessing data uh, through the UK Data Service. Uh, just uh, one second while I set that up. Uh, so you should be seeing uh, the menti.com code or you can use the QR code here just to go straight to it. Uh, and also, uh, I believe Emma's put it in the chat now. Uh, so I'll give you a few seconds to set that up uh, for yourself, uh, and then we'll get into it. Lovely, I can see lots of thumbs up appearing in the bottom screen. Uh, so uh, I'm going to switch to the next slide now for the questions. But uh, as said, the code is in the chat as well if you're a little bit late. Uh, so one thing we'd like to know is what type of user you are. Uh, we uh, cover a lot of different uh, uh, different types of users in the service, uh, like PhD uh, students, uh, teachers, research assistants, uh, economists, uh, personal users as well. Um, and they're all coming up on the screen right now. I can see uh, a very helpful uh, amount of people that are doing uh, this part of a research 
uh, team. Um, we've got a, a few uh, personal users, uh, which are always interesting to see. Um, oh, yeah, everything's just filling in now. Uh, I can see that some people are also uh, perhaps uh, commercial users working for a nonprofit like a, uh, like a government authority. Um, so yeah, um, it's it's a very wide selection of people that we are able to provide data for in the service. I feel like I've, I've got 44. I'm, uh, I'll move on to the next question. Uh, if that's okay. Um, so uh, next one is, uh, prior to today's webinar, have you tried finding or accessing data via the UK Data Service? Uh, if you've never been here before, that's absolutely fine. Uh, that's the kind of the point of this webinar. Uh, but uh, likewise, we're here for people who have had a good look and would still like to uh, know some more about the tools that we provide. Uh, this is very interesting. It's about it's about half and half uh, at the moment, uh, so that's that's a very nice uh, divide there that we've got. Uh, I'll I'll take you to the next slide. Um, so overall, if you've used this before, uh, how confident do you feel in finding and accessing data from the UK Data Service? Now, obviously, we've got quite a few people who are saying they're not confident at all, but that's why you're here. Um, so that makes perfect sense. Um, I'm assuming we don't have many people in the very confident section. Otherwise, why would you be here? Uh, but uh, yes, uh, a good selection. People who've seen all of this before uh, and people who maybe have not, uh, have not been able to try using the Surface before. Um, that's good. We're, we're here for uh, all of you, as it were. Okay. Um, that's, that's perfect. That's very interesting. And, uh, I'm going to take you back to the main presentation. Now we'll get off Mentimeter. There we go. We should be back uh, at the main presentation now, I'm hoping. Uh, so, uh, to begin with, let's look at what the UK data service is. Uh, the UK data service holds the UK's largest collection of research data. Uh, so it's home to the UK's only nationally funded research infrastructure for curating and providing access to social science data um, and has been influential across the world since it was first established in uh, uh, the University of Essex in 1967. Um, the UK Data Service is funded by UK Research and Innovation through the Economic and Social Research Council uh, to meet the data needs of researchers, uh, students and teachers from all sectors. Uh, including academia, uh, central and local government, charities and foundations, uh, independent research centers, think tanks, business consultants, and the commercial sector. Um, our collections include major UK government-sponsored surveys, cross-national surveys, uh, longitudinal studies, uh, UK census data, international aggregate data, uh, business data, uh, and qualitative data. Uh, we provide more than just data. We provide guidance, resources, and training uh, like this workshop to make the most of our data and help researchers develop their key skills in data use. Uh, so at the UK Data Archive, which is the lead organization in the UK Data Service, we work with colleagues across the UK to deliver the service. Uh, we work with research data experts at the Joint Information Systems Committee, the Cathy Marsh Institute for Social Research at the University of Manchester, uh, the University of Edinburgh and UCL. Uh, if you're interested to know more about what we do, the benefits of secondary analysis uh, and uh, an in-depth presentation on the different types of data we hold, uh, we'd recommend uh, you to view the recording of our webinar, An Introduction to the UK Data Service, which uh, we broadcast on the 7th of November, 2024. Uh, this can be found on the UK Data Service YouTube channel and a copy of the presentation slides can also be downloaded from the training and events page of our website. Um, so the data we hold comes from a wide range of sources, and we're allowed to distribute them under license from the original data depositor. 
so we don't we're not involved in the collection process for the data we hold the data is deposited with us but we do take part in preserving curating and presenting the data in our catalog with clear details and documentation to make them available to researchers uh, so some of the most prominent sources for the data we hold are the national statistical authorities like the office for national statistics uh, Nas National Records of Scotland and the Northern Ireland Statistics and Research Agency. Um, also government departments from the UK, um, like the Home Office, DEFRA, uh, the Department for Business, Innovation and Skills and the DWP. Um, intergovernmental organisations as well, including the International Monetary Fund, the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development and the World Bank. Uh, research institutes include uh, the National Center for Social Research, NATSEN, uh, the Institute for Social and Economic Research, ISA, uh, and the Center for Longitudinal Studies, or CLS. Uh, finally, through our catalog, you can also find data that have been deposited by individual researchers and academics, uh, researchers that are funded by the Economics and Social Research Council, or ESRC, also deposit their data with us through ReShare, which is the UK Data Services Online Data Repository, where researchers can archive, publish, and share their data. Uh, the data we hold is suitable for researchers, students, and teachers from any discipline, organization, or country who have registered an account with us. So some data sets have restrictions on access due to the data redistribution license agreements we have with the data providers, um, but there is opportunity for everyone to access the catalog. Um, although most of our users are academic users, anyone can register with us to access the data we hold. Uh, this includes local and national government departments, charities and think tanks, as well as commercial users. Uh, commercial users do have further restrictions as to what they can access, and they may incur fees depending on what they intend to use the data for, um, commercial or, or non-commercial use. Uh, users who are not affiliated to any institution uh, are also welcome to access data to pursue their independent res mm, independent research, uh, but restrictions do also apply on top of that. Uh, so we currently have over 52,000 registered users of the service from around the world. Um, the UK data service currently holds more than 9,000 data sets, and new data sets are added all the time. Uh, a good example of that is data related to COVID-19, which has become sought after within the UK data service in the past few years. Um, the data we offer can be categorized in different ways, and our website has been designed to enable you to access the data sets you require in the most straightforward way possible. Uh, one of the main ways we categorize data is by the type. Um, different types of data might include uh, UK surveys, cross-national surveys, longitudinal data, um, international macro data, uh, census data, business microdata, quantitative data or qualitative data, and mixed methods data. Um, we'll go into those a little bit more later. Um, another way to categorize data is by purpose. So most of the data we have available are for research purposes, but we also offer specially curated data sets that are meant to be used for teaching in a classroom setting. Um, these are curated for this exact purpose. We also categorize data by theme. You can search by uh, large themes, including um, education or aging or crime. Furthermore, we also categorize data by the geography or by the access level. Um, so each data set held in the UK data service collection has an access level. And we'll go into that a little bit more later. Um, these are designated by the data provider depending on the detail, confidentiality, and sensitivity of the data. In the second half of the webinar, we'll look at the, all the access levels. Um, so when searching for the right data to use in your research, it is important to think about the data in all these different ways, uh, thinking about who, what, where, and when you want to investigate can help you in your search for the data. Um, so uh, what types of data are available to download and access to the UKDS? Uh, well, it holds different types of data, including some things we mentioned before, uh, like survey microdata, international macro data, uh, census data, and qualitative mixed methods data. You can have a little look at each of those. Um, so survey microdata, these constitute major UK services and large services, which can be used to produce uh, national estimates. 
uh, and to inform policy making. Through the UK data service, you can also access collections of cross-national survey data, as well as longitudinal data and studies. Um, international macro data contains socioeconomic time series data, uh, aggregated to a country or regional level. Many of the data banks are the current releases of the major statistical publications produced by intergovernmental organizations like the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, and the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Uh, census data. Uh, these data include statistics from the UK censuses, which help paint a picture of the nation and how we live. Uh, they provide a detailed snapshot of the population and its characteristics and underpin funding allocation to provide public services. Uh, the UK data service holds and enables access to aggregate, boundary, flow, and microdata from the last censuses from 1961 through to the latest um, this year, 2021. Also through integrated census microdata, we can provide access to census data from 1851 through to 1921. Um, qualitative and mixed methods data. Uh, qualitative data is non-numeric information. Uh, and mixed methods data approaches um, combine quantitative or numerical data with qualitative uh, non-numerical data. Um, if we could, uh, take a look at how a data set might look when you download and open it, uh, on this slide we have an example of quantitative data. Uh, this is a screenshot taken from the Public Attitudes to Animal Research Survey from 2016. Uh, we'll talk about how you might search for this kind of data over the next few slides. Uh, but here you can see that the banded ages uh, we've got, and we can also see that the government office regions, the GOR column in the middle there, um, are the lowest geographic unit in this case. That is part of the reason why this data set isn't considered high risk. Um, and it's more widely available, since the way it's structured minimizes the risk that participants might be identified. Uh, on this slide, we can see an example of qualitative data or non-numerical data. So you should be seeing an extract from a transcript of an interview with Frank Woolley from the dataset Family Life and Work Experience before 1918. Uh, this data cycle ran from 1870 to 1973, uh, and that's why the dataset is sometimes referred to as the Edwardians. Uh, this data set is also considered open access, uh, and you can find it through Qualibank, which is a useful online tool uh, on the UKDS, which we can talk about later. Um, just a reminder that if you'd like to know more about the different types, types of data that we hold, uh, we recommend looking back at the recording of our Introduction to the UK Data Service webinar, uh, which can be found on our YouTube channel. Uh, we're now going to guide you through the different ways in which you can browse, search, and find data through the UK Data Service. The first way, uh, the primary way of searching and finding data is by using our catalog search tool. Uh, so the data catalog search box can be found by visiting our website homepage at ukdataservice.ac.uk. Uh, on the homepage, you can navigate to find data. It's up on the top left in the menu bar. Uh, you'll immediately see the catalog search box it's the box with the magnifying glass uh, and the text search or data catalog. Um, don't confuse it with the one on the top right uh, because that's more of a search the site. This uh, particular search bar searches the catalog. Um, use the search bar box to look for studies or series on a particular subject or the study number or the name of the principal investigator if you know it. Uh, once you click the search button, a list of related results will appear from the data catalog. Um, so you can select to view the results as studies or a series of studies. Uh, you can also use various filters on the left side of the data catalog pages in order to narrow down your search. So the available filters include um, sort of date from and to. Uh, you can uh, search by topic, uh, but please note that that filter, it only contains a limited set of high level topics. Uh, you can uh, search by data type. Uh, so these include cohort and longitudinal studies, UK survey data, business microdata and census data. Um, access the type of data access permitted by data provided. So those categories, which we'll get into a little bit later. Um, and the country, uh, you can refine the country or countries you want to research. 
Um, finally, you can also reset the filters to start the search again with that reset filters button at the bottom. Um, another way of finding data via the UK data service is by visiting our browse data page. Uh, this option is very useful if you have a particular research topic that you're interested in or you uh, know the specific type of data you're looking for. Um, the browse data page can be accessed as follows. On our main homepage, ukdataservice.ac.uk, uh, please click on the Find Data tab along the top toolbar. Uh, that's the left one. It's got a purple arrow we've put there for the moment. Uh, then select Browse and Access Data, and that's where that yellow arrow is pointing right there in the middle of the screen, uh, that section. Uh, so as you can see, once you visit this page, you'll be able to browse data sets based on the major categories we discussed earlier in the webinar. Here you can browse data by theme, by type, or you can scroll further down and have a look at our section with specially created teaching data sets. Uh, another option we have on this page is the browse by general section. Here you can also browse for data through the following different ways. Uh, the search terms, uh, which will direct you to the HACCP thesaurus. We'll talk about that shortly. Uh, geography, uh, clicking on this will help you find specific geographic data, such as administrative, electoral, or boundary data, and online analysis tools. Um, so this provides you with the option of exploring a suite of online tools we have, so you can explore the data held in our collection. Um, as an example, we can now have a further look on browsing data by theme. Uh, the theme section would be particularly helpful if you know the topic you want to research, but are not sure where to start with finding useful data sets. So the slide shows uh, some of the popular themes that are used, um, aging, environment, energy, health, politics, poverty, and uh, one of our newer additions, the COVID-19 theme. Uh, so selecting any of the above themes will present us the individual theme page. Uh, the individual theme pages not only list key data sets on our selected topic, but they also allow users to view all the data related to this topic within the data catalog. Uh, in this example, the purple arrow points at the View All Data button for the COVID-19 data theme. Uh, you can also navigate and select the View button next to the key data sets of your selected theme, which will take you to the individual study page. In our example, you can see that if you can click the View button uh, the, for the first key data set listed in the section, which is the Business Insights and Conditions Survey, this will take you directly to its catalog page. And there you can find the full details for this specific data set, all its relevant documentation, such as data dictionaries, um, variable lists, and user guides, and a lot of further resources. In the second half of this webinar, we'll provide you with more uh, information on what can be found in a study's specific catalog page. Uh, another way to browse, search, and find data via the UK Data Service is by using the um, Humanities and Social Science electronic thesaurus or HACCIT tool. Um, so your search query is treated both as a free text search. Uh, it will match occurrences of that search string in the metadata fields that we have in our catalog records and has a keyword search, which will max, match words found in the corresponding keyword metadata field in the catalog records. Uh, so keywords are subject terms drawn from the UK Data Archives HACCIT library which have been used to index each study at concept or variable level, and which re represent the concepts covered by that study. Uh, keyword matches are shown in search results prefixed by keywords. So if you know the name of the keyword you're looking for, you can type it into the search box directly by typing keyword colon followed by the keyword in question in capital letters. For example, keyword colon poverty and you can see that on the suggested options on the slide uh, down at the bottom of the uh, search terms. Um, as we've already mentioned, uh, studies in the UK data service collection are all assigned keywords which are aligned with HACCIT. So you can directly access this tool by selecting the help button along the top toolbar on our website, uh, then scrolling down to the section searching for data and using HACCIT to search for data. Um, HACCIT has over 4,600 terms and more than 3,500 alternative terms. So it's a great tool that can help you to find those appropriate terms to search for in the data catalog. 
Um, you can browse the full list from A to Z or click the hierarchy tab to explore by subject. Finally, this tool will allow us to perform a direct search for our selected keyword in the UK Data Service Catalog. Um, before we return to Mentimeter as an activity we've prepared for you to practice finding data, uh, we'd like to present to you a set of useful tools which are designed to support your search and explore the data held in our collection. Uh, the first is a tool to explore survey data, the variable and question bank. Uh, this allows you to find and retrieve information about variables and questions from a range of survey data sets held by the UK Data Service. Uh, you can use this tool to identify which survey data sets contain questions or variables of interest to you. Uh, you can directly access the variable and question bank by selecting the help button along the top toolbar on our website and then scrolling down to the section searching for data and variable and question bank where we found the HACCP tool before. Uh, a key benefit of the variable and question bank is that users can find consistency across data sets for example, where harmonized or common variables have been used over time across different economic and social surveys, each variable record provides a link to more information about the item. Um, in this example, we've searched for highest educational qualification in this tool, which as you can see, returned thousands of results. Uh, to compare, uh, sorry, in order to view a, a single variable record on one page, we can click on the variable name and label, which is in red type on the results page over on the left there. Uh, to compare variables, we can choose add to my variables next to the result we're interested in, and then select the my variables basket at the top right of the page. Um, looks like a, a shopping cart up there. Uh, variables can be compared side by side as shown on our example. Uh, a key limitation of this tool is that not all studies in our data catalog have had their variables added to this search. However, you can check whether the survey you're interested in is covered by using the survey filter. Uh, next, we can look at QualiBank. This tool is the UK Data Services search and browse interface for qualitative data objects, allowing you to search the content of text files, such as interviews, essays, open-ended questions, and reports. Um, similar to the previous tools we've already covered, you can directly access QualiBank by selecting the Help button along the top toolbar on our website and then scrolling down to Searching for Data and Searching QualiBank. Uh, in our example, we have searched for poverty, and we can see that our search returns results where poverty was mentioned as part of interview transcripts, interview summaries, uh, reports, essays, uh, as well as as a web resource. Um, each result provides a diff direct link to the um, catalog page of the qualitative data set that this information relates to. So our purple arrow on this slide is pointing to that link. Uh, like with other search functions in our website, QualiBank results can also be filtered further in order to narrow our search. Some of the available options are research resource type, as we can see on our screen there, um, dates um, and collection title all on the left. Um, since we've had a look at the UK Data Service webpage and the different ways we can search, browse, and find data, we're now going to do a practice activity back on Mentimeter. Uh, I'll have the code back up for you in a second uh, if you need it. Uh, but this will allow you to explore and search the website independently. Uh, so please take a few minutes to participate in the activity. Uh, have a look around the website see if you can find what you're looking for, and we'll be back with you shortly. Uh, I've had some uh, people ask uh, for the questions again for the practice catalog search. Um, so if you, uh, they should be showing for you now. Um, okay, everyone, uh, I hope you've had some time to have a, a look around. Uh, I brought you back to Menti here, I hope. Um, so um, I've heard at least one person having a little problem with Menti, so I restarted sharing the presentation. I'm hoping that's working for you if it wasn't working before. Um, so if you're, um, if you're now in Menti, we'll see how you got on, if you could answer some questions for us. Um, so uh, what type of uh, topic or data were you interested in? What did you search for just now or when, uh, when we asked you to go through the activity? Cool, these are, these are all uh, interesting 
uh, topics uh, that we're bringing up. Obviously, some of you went for more um, wide-ranging topics like poverty or health. Um, obviously, you know, you, you're casting a wider net. Um, uh, so uh, it's possible some of you looking for more specific things, uh, you might uh, be able to find more things if you cast a wider net with a more high-level topic. Uh, but um, at the same time, um, it's always good to know what you're looking for. Um, so it's worth trying both, uh, in my opinion. Uh, I can see some of you are looking for specific local areas. Um, obviously, uh, you'd be looking at different levels of geography, um, which which might be in a more uh, uh, a uh, a more secure data set. So that's always worth thinking about. Okay, that's lovely. That's perfect. So many of you answering. Thank you so much for that. Um, so, question for you: uh, Were you able to find the data sets? I feel like we're getting about half and half here, um, uh, which, uh, to be honest, makes sense. Um, uh, obviously, some stuff uh, in terms of finding the data set is going to be more apparent when uh, when uh, Arachnus goes through his second half of the presentation. Uh, but uh, uh, we'll find out in a second if, uh, if there's anything specific we can help you with. Um, yeah, I'd I'd say we're 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 hitting about half and almost half and half here, um, which again makes perfect sense. It does probably take a little bit of time to get used to searching through. As said, any of the tools we've discussed already uh, will be available in the recording um, for the uh, for this webinar, which will be available on YouTube afterwards. Um, so, if you weren't able to find what you were looking for. Um, why not? What what troubles did you have when searching for data? Uh, uh, okay, I, I can see some people uh, had uh, an issue with uh, uh, the level of security. Uh, that makes perfect sense. Iraklis is going to talk you through that uh, when uh, when we go through uh, his half, um, uh, and uh, as he'll explain to you. Uh, in order to actually download the data, most of the time it's required that you make a project with us. Uh, but uh, I'm hoping that means that you were at least able to find it. Um, uh, uh, the formatting of the data, we'll talk a, a little bit through formatting uh, later. Um, one uh, option uh, is that if you are only able to access uh, Excel or something like it, rather than a statistical program, uh, tab format might work for you. It does open in Excel. Uh, and uh, and yeah, uh, again, some of these questions, um, it's about how specific you were looking for. Um, obviously, uh, it's a, a very large catalog uh, and uh, you'll be able to uh, find things if you had a little bit more time to search. I do know if somebody says not enough time, I apologize for that. But uh, keep in mind, I'm not judging you at all. <laughs> so um, yeah, that, that all makes perfect sense to me. Hopefully, we can clear up some of those questions in the second half. Um, so uh, if there's something that you think would make it easier to find what you were looking for, uh, please tell us. We appreciate the feedback. Uh, and to see where you might think that you were uh, missing out, as it were. Okay, so uh, we've got some uh, uh, we've got some answers coming through. Uh, I love the idea of a flow chart um, of search methods and tools. That seems like a nice idea. Um, I can see uh, that some people found it fairly intuitive, and some people didn't. Um, We'll be going through uh, potentially some examples uh, in Arachnus's half, so uh, hopefully we'll be able to provide one there. Um, uh, if I see some people who are saying, I'd like the information on the data um, in terms of variables 
and uh, and documentation. Every single catalog page, as uh, Arachlis will no doubt go through with you, has a uh, has a documentation tab on the page, and uh, that has everything for um, variables, uh, potentially the questions asked if it's an interview survey, um, uh, that kind of thing. So uh, it is a case of having to look at the catalog page rather than see it from the search uh, from the search function. Um, but uh, again, that, that's something you'll probably find as we go through. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I can see a lot of great answers here. Um, uh, so uh, with that, uh, I'm going to bring you back to uh, the second half of our presentation, uh, which uh, Arachlis will be uh, handing, handling. Ooh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Sean, thank you so much. And uh, thank you everybody for participating. Uh, this is very important to us. I would like to stress as well the, the last slide uh, uh, that Sean uh, presented to us. It's the feedback. So uh, please contact us through any of our channels through the our web form, which is our preferred way of communication. Uh, Emma will put the link uh, on the chat. Uh, because we need your feedback. It's um, it's great for us. We are working as a community. We are here to support you to find the data that you need. So to be able to do the important work that you do to improve everyone's lives. I saw that uh, on the question that what is the data you are interested in and what is the type of the data you are looking for. I saw that uh, it was almost all the different sections of the social science. So it's brilliant to see that. And uh, we are here to support. So please get in contact. Anything we can improve, we are always open for discussions. Thank you so much. Uh, so I will guide you through the second part of our session today. Uh, Soson gave us uh, very kindly information on how we can uh, search the catalog, how what we offer at the UK Data Service, uh, and how to find the data we need, how to go through the tools. Uh, the examples uh, will be on the slide, so you can practice. We have had a very great idea on the questions that uh, we can uh, create uh, like a video or a guide to show examples on how to reach and how to ensure that you find the most relevant data sets based on the type of data you are looking on. And thank you very much for your contribution. And we will move on uh, together to see how we can access the data. So if we suppose that we have located the data set in our catalog and we say that this is the data set that I'm interested in, we will see some more information as well on the documentation, which will help us uh, to understand uh, how to ensure that this is indeed the data set, the data set that we want for our analysis. Um, as uh, Sean mentioned on the first part, each data set uh, held in the UKDS catalog has a designated access level. Uh, so the access level is agreed with the data depositors. It's important to note that we do not own any of the data that we provide as a service. The data belong to the data owner, and we have agreements to disseminate them under the conditions agreed. Um, we provide access via a three-tier access policy, as you see on your screen. Uh, starting from the lower uh, tier, we provide open data, safeguarded data and controlled, or you might hear us referring to as secure data. Uh, the access policy and what is the access level that will be assigned to each data set, it is decided by the data owners, and it is also decided based on how confidential, how sensitive is the data set. We saw an example that open data will provide usually more aggregated uh, information, so the risk to identify a person or a household uh, is almost zero. Safeguarded data, Again, they are not personal data, but the risk is higher and control data are the most sensitive data in our catalog. We will see in detail each one. Uh, a question that will come to your mind, it will be how can I identify uh, the access level? So I have found a data set in the catalog and I want to know, okay, what is the access level that this data set uh, 
as assigned to it. Uh, we see on our slide here, uh, it is one of the most commonly used uh, data sets in our catalog. It's uh, the Understanding Society, uh, the main um, uh, survey data set. And you see on the purple arrow the, uh, that it shows so on the details page, so as you see, we are on the tab details and we see the access. These data are safeguarded. So immediately, you know that we are speaking on the middle layer of access level. It's not open, it's not controlled, but it is safeguarded. Also, we will expand a bit further later, but you can see on your screen uh, the three tabs. You see details, next to it documentation and resources. The documentation is the one that Sean mentioned earlier, that it includes all the information about the data sets, how to apply weights, uh, all the exact questions that uh, were asked. So we are very proud that the UK data service on the way we curate uh, and we preserve the data. Uh, what we want is to provide the community with data sets that are, they have clear instructions on how to use them so to end up at the best possible results. Uh, back to the access level, so we can see that I have identified here that my data set is a safeguarded data set. And you will see as well on the right hand side, the big purple button access data. So each category might have subcategories. So we need to identify the exact requirements and to know, can I meet those requirements? I need to select the purple button access data. Here we are, and we read together that this data collection, this data set is available to UK data service register users subject to the end user license agreement. So we, it means that we need to be a registered user with the service to agree to that agreement. And it has an extra note that if um, a researcher needs to use it for commercial purposes, um, they need, uh, we need to seek approval from the data owner. So the data owner has said, I want to see all applications before providing approval if the use of the data is for a commercial reason. So that was a first example. We will see further details. Uh, this is a very nice table. We have it on uh, the uh, on our website. It's when we select a uh, find data. It has all the access conditions in a very nice presented way. So as you see on the left hand side, we have the three uh, tiers we discussed, the open, safeguarded and controlled. And you can see the difference of so the, the middle, the access conditions can be the different scenarios. And as you see that safeguarded can have more subcategories. And who can access it? On the right uh, column, we have that who can access this data set. So let's have a look uh, to begin first with the open data. Uh, governments all around the world are increasingly committed to data transparency. So there is the principle that data that are publicly funded should be publicly available. Uh, so as we progress, more and more of our data collections are available using open data licenses, of course, uh, subject to it being safe and uh, uh, legally correct to do so. Uh, data license for use with an open license are not personal data and they have a relatively, relatively few conditions. So to access open data set, it says who can access anyone. So we do not need to register with the service. We find the data set, we select download and we can access the data set. Then uh, moving to the second category, the safeguarded data. So here are thousands more of data sets that are in the safeguarded. So out of the more than 9,000 data set in our catalog, uh, controlled for the last, for the sensitive are approximately 1,000. So the majority are open and safeguarded data. So we will explore now further the safeguarded category. We said for the open data, we don't need registration. We find the data set, we can download the data set immediately and we are bound by the open government license in most cases. Safeguarded data now. As we see, we can have different categories here. Um, you see that uh, we might have safeguarded data under end user license only or uh, end user license plus some special conditions on the middle column. Uh, and user license plus depositor permission, or it might be special license. All those are in the family of the safeguarded data. As you see on the uh, third column, we see that 
all of those, so when we speak about safeguarded data, all of those require a registration. We can think of it like that one of the safeguard is for the data owner to know who is accessing that data set and for which purpose. So uh, immediately when we see safeguarded data, we need to provide our details to the service so the data owner can have access to that, that this person is accessing this data set for this research. So let's see. Uh, so we said that to access the safeguarded registration is always important, always the first condition, and to agree to the end user license agreement. Let's do a parenthesis here to see how we can do, how we can complete the registration um, very easily through our website. So uh, at any point on the website, all you need is to click the top right uh, yellow button, the login. Uh, we do not have a separate login and registration button. Selecting the login, if it's the first time you are trying to access the service, the system will recognize it and it will guide you through the registration journey. Uh, it's very important to note that if you are a UK academic uh, user, it's very likely that uh, you can uh, register to the service using the credentials you have already been provided by your institution. Uh, as we can see here on this screen example, um, let's suppose that I'm a researcher from the University of Manchester trying to access for the first time the service. I have selected already login and I start searching for my institution. I search for University of Manchester and on the next screen, immediately the system will send me to the organization's login um, platform. So here I use the credentials the University of Manchester has issued to myself, my username, my password. And once I complete my authentication, I will be back on the next slide on the UK data service website where we see on the left, we get a message that this is the first time you are accessing our services. Please complete your registration before you access, um, before you can be considered a registered user. Um, the authentication does not provide us with the details. That's why you need to type your details, uh, your contact address, your name. Uh, and at the very end, we, you will be presented, you see, with the end user license agreement. So you will not become a registered user unless you have read the end user license agreement. So uh, this is like a contract uh, that you agree to main conditions that you will not share, for example, data uh, with a third party, uh, that you will destroy the data that you have accessed at the end of your project, etc. There are a certain number of conditions we need to agree. There is a register button at the end. We select it and we are registered users. Next time we want to log in, we select the yellow login button and we authenticate with our example again University of Manchester credentials and then we will be uh, logged in already without having to do that every time. Perfect. Uh, if I can move on the next slide we can see what happens uh, if you are not an academic user. We have users from all over the world from different sectors so uh, a lot of people uh, will need to be provided with a username and password to register with us. So that's exactly how it is done. You select again the login button on the top right and your organization will not appear on the search when you start typing it because it's not on the agreement to be able to log in using your existing credentials. All you need to do is to tick the box. My organization is not listed as we see on this screen and Again, on the next slide, we can see again uh, to tick it one more time to confirm that my organization is not listed. I need to request a UK data service username. So what will happen is that the UK data archive, which is the lead organization of the service, will actually provide you with a, U with a UKD username and, the pa and you will create your own password. There are uh, usual steps of registration. You enter your email address, which has to be your institutional e email address. Uh, very important to note here that when you register with the service, you need to register under the affiliation under which you are intended to do the work. So if I uh, suppose that I have 
two affiliations. I'm a researcher uh, at the University of Manchester, and at the same time, I'm, I work in local government, and I'm a researcher here. I am allowed to have two accounts. The I need to use the correct account if I am doing work and I, I need to access this data to do research under my affiliation in the local government, I will need to log in with that account and access the data. So always, uh, this is a very important uh, information. So we provide our email address, we verify our email address with a one-time code that will be sent to us. And on the next step, we complete an application to request our username. Turning next, we receive an email from the service to complete our registration. Uh, you see, uh, we have uh, taken it out, we have wiped it out, but you see it says the uh, first name, last name. Your username is that, so this is the username you will you have been assigned. And on point number one, it says click the following link to activate your account. What will happen when you click the link? On the next slide, you will be presented with uh, the UK Data Archive Identity Provider because you have been given username and password from the UK Data Archive. So this is the page you will be doing your authentication. From here, things are similar to the UK users because once you authenticate yourself, the very first time we will ask you, this is your first time, please complete your registration. and each time uh, you want uh, to log in uh, on the next slide, you can either select UK Data Archive as your organization, or the easiest is to select my organization is not listed. And you see below, if you can't find your organization, request a username, you have done it, and then sign in here. So to recap, after you have registered as a non-UK user, to log in, you can either search for UK Data Archive to authenticate yourself, or you can tick my organization is not listed and use the sign in here, which again will send you to the same place. Uh, of course, any questions on the registration process, uh, please feel free and of course on anything uh, to, to contact us uh, on the telephone, on the web form, and we will be happy to guide you through uh, anything uh, you will need support with. So going back, uh, we were we have stopped on the safeguarded data. So when we said that the all the safeguarded data require us to be a registered user, because we said the main safeguard is to know who is accessing the data and for what purpose. A very simple example of safeguarded data, uh, we call them sometimes the end user license data. It is safeguarded, so I need to be a registered user. I have accepted the end user license, so that is the only condition for thousands of data sets to, to be able to access them. Let's see how we do it. An example, we have a random data set in our screen. You see on, on the top right that I am already uh, logged in. So I see my account and log out. In the parentheses, it has how many data sets I have waiting to be assigned. I will explain that further. So, Let's say I have identified these data sets in the UK 2022. The access conditions is it is a safeguarded data set and we have already clicked the purple button and we see that the data collection is available subject to the end user license agreement. I have already uh, met that requirement. I'm registered users, I have accepted the end user license. So I need to click add to account, the purple button on the bottom. And then here we have it. It's I have you see the parentheses on the top right is now one because I have as I have added this in my account, but it needs to be assigned to a project. Remember, we said safeguarded who is accessing the data and for what reason. So I need to create a project so the data owners could have access to the information of why I need this data set. So all I need to do is to tick the create a new project or add to existing project. Of course, if I have already created my project, I select next and let's see some information. I think as well on the comments, uh, it was a comment that uh, I'm asked to create a project. So all we need to do is the title of the project that should be similar to the project, how you name the project you are working on 
uh, if it is a student, uh, the PhD title, if it is, uh, so to, to be relevant to the work you do. And you see that we have three options for the project type, commercial, non-commercial, and teaching. 99% of the projects we have are non-commercial projects, uh, academic for, so any work that does not lead to any subscription product and uh, revenue. Um, commercial is exactly that, if the use of the data will lead to any subscription product and um, it's the only type that will require payment. And the teaching project, uh, we have that project. So if uh, an, an instructor, a professor would like to use data for teaching purposes in a classroom setting, we have that teaching project. When we select it, we get further details on how to set that up correctly to be able to share the data. Because remember, all the people who will view and access the data need to meet the uh, conditions of the data set. So, this data set needs us to be a registered user. So everybody who is to access that data set needs to be a registered user and have accepted the end user license agreement. Uh, moving on, uh, in this example, I have selected a non-commercial project, an academic project. Supposedly, I have named it my example project title. And you see this data set now, I have assigned it to that project and I'm ready. The status is active. so. Uh, the data owner, if they would like, they can request the information. Uh, Heracles is using this data set for this example project. And all I need is to tick it and click download, select it, so to be able uh, to download the data set. Uh, if we see the next slide, you see we uh, the majority of the data sets in our collections are available in Stata, SPSS and tab format, uh, commonly used formats. Of course, uh, uh, the, the tab format can indeed be opened in uh, Excel. Uh, however, uh, it might be an old data set that um, might have not been provided in all formats. A rare case, but if you have a question, if you would like a data set that it's not in the desired format and you would like to query that, uh, we have our curation team. So the curation team can uh, look into it to provide what you need. Uh, if the, of course, the request as well is um, a, a request that uh, is from a, a number of people that will provide good, but we are here to support and uh, please get in contact with us if the provided format is not uh, the correct for you. Moving next, I'm doing another parenthesis here. If you see that the study number, so we are on the details page, if you see that your study number has six digits and starts with 85, so all our data sets have four digits. But if you see six digits starting with 85, this means that the, this data set is not deposited in our curated repository, it's on the research repository. And what is the research repository? Uh, this started uh, as a requirement. Uh, the ESRC uh, was requesting that uh, data uh, projects that are funded by the ESRC, you need to share your data at the end of the project. So uh, research was created for this purpose initially, and now it offers to anybody the option to share data uh, and, or to share, for example, metadata or to share their code to be able to be for other people to reproduce their work. Uh, so research is, uh, as we call it, the self-deposit repository of data. Any data set starting with 8.5 is on a research. Um, the links will guide you directly to that. And research offers open or safeguarded data open, download immediately, safeguarded, you need to be registered. And as we see on the next slide, please ensure that you read. So on the left, we see how it will appear on the catalog. You will see the message, download it from the research repository. You click it and the, it, you will be sent directly to that. And as we see on the right hand side, apologies, it's, uh, the text is a bit small, but we can see the contact. So, uh, and the notes, which is that this data collection is available if you are a registered user, 
And, but this request, uh, the data owner specifically for this one has requested that they need to give their permission before we authorize access. Uh, please email the contact person directly so it will guide you on how to access the data set specifically based on the agreement. Uh, the data owner discusses that with the UK data service and agree to the most optimal solution. That was the parenthesis for the uh, for our uh, research uh, repository. And let's see now another example, safeguarded data. We're still on the safeguarded category. We have seen the simplest one. All of them, I need to be a registered user. Now, might be a case that I need to be a registered user. So here we have an example. The first line is always the same for safeguarded, but it has extra conditions. It mentions that if I need commercial use, I need to seek approval from the data owner, okay. And we see uh, the next condition that it says that if it's a commercial organization, and let's say commercial organization, but the, uh, is doing a non-commercial uh, project, who, so has been assigned by a government department to do a work for them. So that will be classified as non-commercial use of the data. But they need to notify the National Center for Social Research by email. So a, a, a different special additional condition that the data owner wants to be on that data set. Uh, so we will see how we would do it because when I assign this data set to my project, it will also have, um, it will also ask me to agree to that condition. That will be the extra step I will need to do. Uh, we have used this data set as an example as well for another reason. You see, we have two options on the bottom. One is to add it to my account. And the other is to access it online using Nestor, which is an online tool we have. So uh, we, we are using this tool because instead of adding it to your account, downloading it and going to explore it, you can just, uh, if you are just logged in, you can just explore the data set using the Nestor. And we have one slide uh, on the next page where we see how Nestar uh, looks like. So it has uh, a number of uh, surveys and data sets on the left hand side. And you can uh, look at the documentation and you can also do some tabulation and basic analysis. Um, so to, to support you explore the data set and see if that will meet your needs without going through all the journey to download it um, official, let's say formally. The, Important here, because this uh, website was uh, built in frames, the information we get from our technical teams, uh, please prefer we have now a tab on it to use Firefox and to ensure that you are logged in to the service uh, before you access it. This is uh, this will ensure that you will not face any challenges using the Nestor, but it is a very, very useful tool and it can save you a lot of time. Uh, moving next, so yes, here we are. So uh, we have added now, uh, I have done the first route to add this data set in my account for a non-commercial uh, use. Uh, so I am a registered user, my usage is non-commercial, but I need to see and agree first to the additional condition. As we see, the status of the data set is not green, it's yellow request access, it's still, I still have missing things that I haven't completed. All I need to do is to click complete actions, the purple button we see, that will open, as we call it, the workflow that guides you step by step all the actions you need to complete to access the data set. And here is the condition we read it outside. We can see it again here that I need to read and accept the statement that if I belong in a commercial organization, I need to first contact the National Center for Social Research. Once we tick it and we agree, the data set will become green, active, and I will be able to download it. So this uh, this way of, um, of acting is common. So all the data sets safeguarded and above, you need to add them. You need to be a registered user to add them in your account, in a project, and then to complete the actions. The actions is what will be changing its time based on the level and based on the uh, conditions that have been agreed. Uh, we can see another example on the next page. We have the depositor permission. So here we see Health Survey for England 2018, uh, safeguarded data set. 
So what is the first condition? I need to be uh, a UK data service registered user subject to end user license agreement. I have done it. You see on the top, I am already logged in. So I have met already this condition. And next we see more information. It says access is limited to applicants based in this and this and this and this country. Another condition, access is limited to applicants based in higher education or central and local government. And it mentions at the bottom, if there are any access requests from users not in the above categories, this will need uh, deposit or approval. Um, so in short, the data owner, uh, when depositing this specific data set, has said, we are happy uh, for uh, the countries, the adequate countries that they have an adequate level of data protection. So applicants from there to access it, applicants in those sectors to access it. But if you receive a request uh, coming from an applicant not in that country or not in that sector, don't reject it immediately. We want to see an application to decide if we will authorize access to data or not. So this is the thinking behind of it and how this is being implemented. Uh, when I select to access it, uh, I will see just, just a note that uh, also when we add the data set, any data set for commercial purposes, the rare 1% scenario we can have, uh, it's also a um, type of data permission. So all commercial, uh, all access requests for commercial purposes need to receive deposit or permission. All, all, almost all data owners say that I want to see before uh, authorized. Of course, there is a limit. Open data can be used, safeguarded with permission, and then that's it. Special license and secure data cannot be used for commercial usage. Uh, sorry for that parenthesis. It was important to note. If we see the next screen, what will happen? You see, we have highlighted uh, here somebody has added this data set, for example, in a commercial project. So they see extra conditions that payment is required. You will need a commercial license and the button deposit or permission. Even if I have added it uh, in, a, in a project for non commercial purposes, the, the deposit or permission button will still be there if I was outside of the country. So to recap, if I was outside of the countries uh, specified, or if I was not in the sectors specified, I will my data set will be yellow. I will need to click the depositor permission and submit an application to our access services team, our team that will be sent to the data owner for approval. The same will have happened as we see here. If the data set was added in a commercial project, Again, I will need it permission, but I will also have to agree to extra conditions that uh, that will require a payment if it gets approved, et cetera, et cetera. So that is another case of safeguarded data. Safeguarded data with depositor permission. Uh, moving next, one, uh, uh, yes, this is uh, how the our form looks like it's a, a simple form uh, you give as you see on the table of contents on the right hand, hand side how to complete this form uh, provide us information about the research team the research proposal so it is to allow the data owner to make um, an informed decision on whether to permit access to the data set for this project or not the next the last uh, subcategory of uh, safeguarded data is the special license data. So the special license data are again safeguarded. So the first condition will always be to be a registered user uh, in the UK, a, a registered user, uh, excuse me, in the UK data service. But the these are they they carry a bit higher risk than their less restrictive uh, options. Uh, usually, special license data will go a bit lower in uh, geography. They will have local authority where uh, we will have uh, the government regions on the less restrictive uh, option. Or they might have um, the less restrictive might be uh, might be giving uh, general information on the age. This one might have month of birth. So that for that reason, it is classified as a special license, carries more risk, still non-personal data, uh, but if maliciously those are linked with personal databases, the risk is higher that a, a subject might be identified 
that's why more information and more scrutiny is needed. So, how to identify? You see on the axis, uh, if we can go please on, on the previous um, uh, slide, uh, here again, thank you so much, on the axis, we see safeguarded, so it's, it says against the safeguarded data set, but we see on the title, so the special license will always mention this on the title, special license access. Um, and so we will notice immediately that that needs more, has more restrictions and storage restrictions and application restrictions. We click now uh, the access, the purple button access data to see the detail information as expected and user license agreement on the first, of course, I'm a registered user, safeguard the data. Commercial use not permitted, so special license and above, special license and secure, there is, they will not be given for commercial uh, purposes. And uh, use of the data requires approval, you need to complete a special license application. So the steps are very similar to what we have seen already. Uh, I will uh, log in to be registered, I will add it to my account, and I will assign it to a project. And if we go to the next page, this is the workflow that I will see. So it will not be active, of course, because I need to do more steps. But here is what I will see. Accept standard EUL. I have done it already. Complete special license bundle. So this is a set of forms. It has a project uh, application form. Uh, it has a form for any additional researcher that will be part of my team which, of course, each person will need to be uh, online registered user in the service to be part of the project. And I complete all the forms. There are clear instructions that you need to send them on the email help at ukdataservice.ac.uk. What we will do, we will receive the form, we will screen it uh, to ensure that it is under the standards that have been agreed with the data owner. And this will be sent for approval. Um, so on your side, you complete the steps and on the back side, you see the depositor approval will be completed by us once uh, we have received the approval. Some important information on the next slide for special license, because as we said, these are uh, more restrictive data uh, for the reasons we discussed. It has, it's very, very important uh, that to ensure before we request those type of data that we will meet the storage requirement, the access requirement, and the conditions. So there is a document, the Research Data Handling and Security Guide for Users. In the application, there is a link for that, so you will be guided there. And um, technically, the access needs to be institutional in an institutional device managed and owned by the university. Uh, because of the risk, there are more restrictions on that. Another very important note is that uh, to access the more restrictive data, the special license in that case data set, uh, it is very important to, ha to have proper justification. So to explain why in your research the less restrictive option, so in that example, the less restrictive might not have month of birth. The special license might include month of birth. It's very important to justify, to complete the form, to justify, to explain to the data owner that I'm doing this project, this is the funder, et cetera, et cetera. I need this variable, which is not on the less restrictive data set. It is on the special license data set, thus I need that data set. So to enable, again, an informed decision. Uh, I'm uh, cautious a bit of the time, uh, but if you are happy, of course, if uh, uh, anybody has uh, other uh, arrangements, uh, feel free to finish. But if we can continue, uh, if I'm happy for uh, some five, ten minutes more uh, to see more details on the information, if everybody is happy. Uh, on the next slide, again, remember we said that how do I know if the if the data that I'm accessing is if I actually need is the special license the one I need or is the less restrictive or is the more restrictive the secure so you see again on the right hand side the three tabs I am in the catalog page of this special license data set and I have the details tab the details tab if I scroll all the way down as we see on the left hand side it will always have a paragraph telling me the differences between the versions. So I can get info here. Here it tells me there are two versions of the main understanding society data. One is the less restrictive 
end user license, and the other is the special. The special contains month and year of birth instead of just age, more detailed country, etc. etc. Also, I can select the tab documentation where I can see full details of the data set. And in most cases, there is also a file we see it on the bottom of the page, which is variables in special license version. So here I can see what variables are there in the special that are not in the one that only needs the end user license agreement. So I can decide if uh, indeed I need that or I need to use the less restrictive. The resources tab uh, has information uh, on the impact. So you can find uh, information on uh, other cases that the data set has been used. So when you send us, because it's a requirement under the end user license agreement to send us information on publications based on this data set, on the resources tab, you can see such publications. Of course, the understanding society is slightly different. The data owner keeps their own record. So when uh, you inform us on publications about understanding society, we direct you to their, um, uh, to their that org uh, in, in an organization and they guide you through and they collect the publications. Perfect. I hope that is helpful. We can move on for some minutes on the control data, the most sensitive. So control data, the the most confidential and sensitive data, those cannot be downloaded. So the, uh, these data are not downloadable um, because they have much more detail. Uh, uh, subjects ca can be identified. Uh, so this data are not suitable for use by any inexperienced researchers. Uh, such as an undergraduate uh, student, and they should only be applied for if absolutely necessary. We understand that justification will be, again, the, a very important uh, factor. Uh, it's very important to note that controlled data, secure data, can only be accessed by users at the, affiliated with a UK institution and physically based in the UK. There are some... Um, exemptions on that. Uh, there is a um, tries between different countries. It's the International Data Access Network, where, for example, a researcher uh, with a German affiliation can visit a specific safe room in one of our partners in Germany to access UK control data. There is a specific page if you are interested and have any questions on that, please get in contact and we will inform you. But the main rule is based affiliated with a UK institution, physically based in the UK to access the secure lab. Um, uh, perfect. So let's see some information, uh, the application requirements. So there are different pathways, but uh, there are common things on the application. So to access secure lab, we follow the five safes. So overall, uh, we, we need to have a safe researcher. So the researcher needs to be an accredited researcher, either with uh, a Digital Economy Act accredited researcher status, if the data are uh, ONS data, uh, but we will go through with the researcher to ensure that uh, it will become an approved researcher in order to access secure lab. Then um, another of one of the five safe is a approved uh, project, safe project. So again, we will need an application uh, to provide all the required information uh, and of course to ensure that it will have uh, public benefit. So uh, that, that's the person, for example, the secure data will not be provided for an undergraduate dissertation. This is uh, because the data owner will not take the risk to provide access to somebody to data if the end result is not to improve everyone's life and have a publishable work that uh, will inform policy, etc. Um, so as we see, it's not generally available to students. Very important information uh, and the link with the organization, a representative from the organization and also countersigning a legal agreement, uh, accepting responsibility for the access of the data. Uh, important to note that the access, supposedly we meet all the conditions, how we access the secure lab, uh, it's either from the designated office. So supposedly uh, I'm a professor at the University of Manchester. I will have my office. We whitelist the IP address so that 
institutional device in my office where I need to ensure that I meet the conditions that my screens are not overlooked. I, there's a list of measures I need to take. This device will be allowed to connect to SecureLab, an online environment where I will have a folder with the data sets that have been approved and I will have access to uh, a set of uh, software, uh, R, data, all the software I need, uh, Word. So nothing is downloadable. The session is online, everything is recorded. And at the end, when I have done my analysis and I want to produce my results, my output, I place them in a specific folder, I raise a request, and we have a user support team where they go through and they check the output before releasing it. This is another option of the five safes, the safe outputs. So statistical disclosure control, so the outputs released are safe um, to be published and nobody can be identified from uh, the output. So these are the main uh, the main requirements for accessing Secure Lab. If we could see, please, uh, the next screen. Uh, this can sound sometimes uh, confusing, but it is not the. Uh, remember, all the data sets we said, I need to follow the same. Um, the same action. So I will add it to my account. Of course, I will do my research to ensure that it is the data set I need. I have justified it and I'm ready to explain it to the data owner. I will add it in my account and then I will see my workflow. The workflow will guide me towards the actions I need to do. Here, uh, of course, when you see our help pages, you will see that the because of different legislations uh, and the, for example data offered by the office for national statistics uh, they need to follow the digital economy act legislation framework uh, the smart energy lab there is the smart energy uh, framework on top of the gdpr so because of different requirements the depending on the type of the data i'm applying for the requirements might be slightly different but the most uh, important, the main ones we discussed are always be the same. And remember, the workflow will guide you through. You add it on your account, you assign it to the project, and you just follow the steps on your workflow. It will tell you exactly all the steps you need to do to make your application. And I think, yes, on the next page, we have as well an example. So on the left-hand side, we see understanding society. So this is the secure version of the same data set we have seen earlier uh, for the survey of the understanding society. You, you see, on the left, it tells me I need to be a registered user, of course, have accepted the UL. I have done it. I need to have uh, completed my research proposal. I need to complete it. So it will give me, when I click it, it will give me instructions on how to do it. I need to become a, an approved accredited researcher. So I need another form it will give me. So all I need to do is to follow the information on here. You see, on the right-hand side, business structure database, secure data set uh, uh, via the ONS. So as you see, there are slightly differences. So the form is different. Um, instead of completing a form to become accredited researcher, I need to obtain DA accredited researcher status directly via the ONS. But similar, it follows the same. I need to have an a project. So I need an application. I need to prove that I'm an approved accredited researcher. I need to agree to the secure access user agreement. This is the one that my organization will countersign. I need to complete safe researcher training, which we provide as well. We, and we will work with you to set up your secure lab account, etc. cetera. Uh, before we go to the next step on to see uh, the help pages, uh, just to inform you that uh, special license data. Ah, so sorry, I'm getting just one step back for the secure for the secure lab. Yes. So we said you can access it from your designated uh, office at your institution and there are also other options such as there is the safe pod network so there are usually in libraries at universities there is a safe pod uh, which you can book it to go and connect from there to secure lab uh, we also have here based at the uk data archive at the university of essex a safe room here where somebody anybody can book it and come and access their project of course they need to have an approved project first and have been given the authority to do so uh, that is on the secure uh, important to note that special license data we said can be downloaded secure cannot be downloaded so on both 
uh, because we understand something that started in COVID, we understand that a lot of people nowadays are working remotely. There is the chance in both, depending if the data set is allowed, if the project is allowed, uh, get in touch with us. We are working as well on um, making more efficient because we we created a procedure, safe procedures during COVID uh, to, to allow people to keep doing their research. But now we're looking at it again to ensure that uh, we can uh, meet requirements. And uh, so I want to say that if you have a project with special license or secure data and you are interested in home working, please get in contact with us and we will guide you through to check if it is eligible if the data set is eligible, if the project is eligible, and if you meet the criteria to do so. The connection, of course, it's technically a remote connection from your using an institutional device at home, a laptop from the university, to remote into the institutional device in your office, etc. But I will not go in detail in this uh, uh, webinar. Be feel free to contact us. Uh, so the uh, last bit, our help pages, I think, uh, Son, I can uh, uh, pass the microphone to you. Uh, uh, yes, think, sure. yes. We'll, thank we'll you, thank you very this. much. Uh, we'll go through this real quick. Uh, so uh, our help pages, uh, we uh, can cover so many of the topics that we've already talked about further on the help pages. If you would like to look, it's just uh, go to the web page, click uh, help at the top right there. Um, you can search the section exploring data online. Uh, that That's going to cover a lot of the things that we've already done and hopefully a lot more. Uh, so uh, you can find information on all the online tools we presented during the webinar, uh, plus uh, additional tools uh, and information. Uh, you can contact us via our online web form. Uh, you can find that on the help page of the website. Uh, you can scroll down to contact our help desk and click in touch and get get in touch. Click that button. Uh, someone from our data access team will pick up your query and answer your question. So that's us directly. It's it's me or Arachlis or one of the other people in the team. Uh, so uh, we generally know what we're talking about or we can uh, pass you over to somebody who does. Uh, here are some of the upcoming events that can be found on the training and events page of our website. Uh, so there's also a link for the YouTube video for the introduction to the UK data service webinar, uh, which we mentioned before that was held earlier this month. Um, and uh, we really value your feedback, uh, positive and negative. So uh, depending on how you're watching, you might get a survey immediately after you leave Zoom or by email tomorrow, potentially. Um, please take a minute to fill it in when you receive it. Um, it will help us plan future events. Uh, and uh, we might have time for a couple of questions, uh, but essentially, uh, if you want to contact us, you can do it through the website. You can email us directly, help at ukdataservice.ac.uk. Uh, that again comes straight to our inbox. Uh, we have an X account, UK Data Service, um, and obviously, the YouTube channel has uh, a lot more information uh, on it for individual things and webinars like this one. Uh Indeed, uh, my, my thank you as well. So to say my goodbyes as well. Thank you very much. So please don't forget, we are all together on this uh, to deliver the impact, uh, to improve outcomes in society. So uh, please uh, feel free to work with us, give us your feedback, and we will be happy uh, to work alongside you to improve anything we can. That's uh, thank you from me.